Welcome to Words on Words, a podcast presented by the University of Nevada Reno Writing Center. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Words on Words. We're bringing you another discussion of our favorite books, this time within the genre of fiction. And for this discussion, we're joined by Melissa and Karina. If you'll briefly introduce yourself. Hey guys, my name is Melissa. I am a senior and I am majoring in English with a minor in sociology. Hi guys, my name is Karina. I'm a journalism major with a business minor, and I'm a sophomore. So as I said, we'll be talking about our favorite works of fiction or favorite fiction authors um, or subgenres if we get there. Today is all about fiction. Ideally, you'll hear a book or an author that piques your interest and you can check it out, or maybe you'll hear your favorite book come up in discussion. Uh, so let's get started with favorite books. So whoever wants to go first. So my favorite book of all time is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. And I really like this book because Sandra Cisneros is actually a poet. So the way that this fiction reads is, has a lot of rhythm to it, a lot of cadence. But it's also one of those books that carries a lot of meaning, I guess. And I think about it sometimes when I'm writing essays. It's about uh, told from the perspective of like a young Hispanic girl growing up in a poorer part of Chicago. And they're just little vignettes, so it's a really easy read. I think it's less, it's gotta be less than 200 pages altogether. It's actually one of those books that also has just like a lot of sentimentality to me. Um, my aunt gave it to me when I was little, and so she told me it was her favorite book. So I was like, well, now it's my favorite book because you're my hero. But it actually did become my favorite book after reading it a bunch of times. How old were you when you first read it? Dude, I must have been like. 14 probably Mm because I was in high school yeah and you know it's interesting when you go back and read books I don't know if you've done that and you just realize how much you missed (laughs) even though you thought you were being super deep the first time you read it and you really understood it that's cool because every time you read fiction I mean when you read fiction at different points in your life you bring in new perspectives yeah I definitely agree with that because I read that book I think it was just required for class, yeah. I think my freshman year of high school, and I hated it, and I, was like, <laughs> and I didn't like it at all. And then I read it um, when I must have been like 18, 19, and okay. I really, really enjoyed it. So I think, yeah, you're definitely right in, in rereading books, I think, because right. even though the literature doesn't change, your interpretation does, and it, it just changes everything about the book. So, and it's interesting, totally too, that idea of like when it's a required reading in high mm-hmm. school, I mean, if it had been required, I might have had different feelings about it. But looking back, some of my, like, the books that I appreciate the most, like the fiction books that I appreciate the most, I was forced to read. (laughs) So I don't know. Yeah, I totally understand that. My favorite book would definitely have to be A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini, or Hosseini, excuse me. And that one was required for my high school class also and I was not happy because I always hated reading books and then once I read it I was just floored because the writing is very poetic it's an extremely descriptive book and it also just I learned so much just about Afghan culture so much about um, what feminism looks like in other countries because it is so different from what feminism looks like in America um, especially today and that book honestly changed my life. It's amazing. I think everyone should read it twice. So <laughs> so you read that? Did you ever read that as a senior? Yes. I think that's when I read it. And it was one of those books that really, yeah, like you said, made me step back and, like, I don't know, reconsider some of the stereotypes mm-hmm. I had about the Middle East, which I didn't even really know I had stereotypes until I read that book. And... Yeah, it, that one has definitely always stood out to me. I remember reading that. Thousands of, he wrote Kite Runner, huh? Yes, which Sorry, I haven't I read, but it's on the list. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what other ones he's written. I'll have to see. So for either of those books, um, what kind of reader would you recommend this to? Or is it really everybody? It sounds like these are, are very kind of pivotal books in your life and that everyone should read them. Um, but what, what kind of audience do you think would either best benefit from reading them or would kind of enjoy them the same way that, that you have? I think for um, A Thousand Splendid Sons, I think people interested in feminism would really enjoy the book um, just because I think everyone should be a feminist but when you read something that is so powerful and allows you to kind of have introspection to something that most American women would never understand I think it really it changes everything about how you view um, women's rights how you view the Middle East like Melissa was saying and I also think 
it's just it's applicable to everyone I think there's a lot of family tension in the book there's a lot of gender racial tension I think most people that would read the book would be able to relate to it in some way which is amazing and I think it's really well written as well Uh, I mean the house on mango street (laughs) like Karina was saying I think it hits people differently at different times it's not super casual but I think it could be it's really like if you're in the mood to like really like dissect it you can get a lot from it but it can also be a casual read so outside of um, those two books are authors are there any other authors of fiction that you enjoy reading um, that you might recommend to somebody um, any other authors that were maybe as impactful on your life as, as these two books but not as much or? I mean I think some great books for college students I mean if you're an English student you're probably gonna have to or you're going to encounter these books at some point But Cormac McCarthy, I mean, his most famous book is The Road. There's a movie about it now. He's also written, like, Blood Meridian and No Country for Old Men, if I'm correct. I'll have to double check on that. (laughs) But they are some dense books. Like, they're intense, and they're so depressing, but it's kind of awesome how depressing they are. And, like, it's a lot of work to get through them, but it's also that experience that when you're done, you, you feel proud albeit like maybe a little bit down, but <laughs> you really feel like you can gain something. And I've utilized those books in a lot of my essays before if I want to like reference literature in some way. I also really liked The Handmaid's Tale, which again, there's a show on Hulu now, but Margaret Atwood, she's the writer, and she's also written a lot of books. And I think that that one, again, is great for feminists, definitely great for feminists. It's a really impactful book. But it's just the way it's written. It's so well written. It's so beautiful. Her prose is so beautiful that, again, it feels like an accomplishment when you finish it. You feel like you've really read art as opposed to maybe entertainment. I think for me, an author that had a really large impact on my life was Albert Camus. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I know that um, (laughs) everyone pronounces that a little differently. But I read The Stranger, which I really did not enjoy. Um... (laughs) I felt really strongly about it just because the overall sentiment of what life means I didn't necessarily agree with. And then I stumbled across a short story he wrote called The Nuptials at Tapasa. And it's uh, translated from French, of course, but that is my favorite piece of writing. It's only about 20 pages long, but the, the sentiment with that is that everyone has the responsibility to be in a state of nuptials with the earth and with their surroundings, the universe, and their own body. And that to me was probably the most profound piece of literature I've ever read. Um, I would recommend it to anyone. And I think that it changes the meaning of life for a lot of people. Um, Unlike The Stranger, which it's strange that it's the same author. But um, yeah, that piece was definitely something that meant a lot to me as well. Uh, So Karina, you've mentioned uh, a couple times that you didn't like... (laughs) <laughs> these books at first um, and I'm kind of in the camp where I'm not I'm not much of a fiction reader um, like my my favorite books of fiction are from my youth of like uh, Trumpet of the Swan and <laughs> of Mice and Men and kind of things of that nature um, what kind of advice or what what kind of suggestions would you give someone who's kind of like me I'm more of a non-fiction reader like so what what would you say to someone either who has a book in class that they're really not <laughs> not excited to read, they're kind of just trudging through something, if you, if you have any advice or suggestions for how to make it a better reading experience or maybe appreciate a side of fiction that they might not have before? Um, I would definitely say, you know, don't be afraid to have an opinion. If you hate a book, then that's okay. Um, they're not meant for everyone to enjoy. Catcher in the Rye is a huge cult favorite. That's probably my least favorite book. It just, I couldn't stand it, read it again, gave it another shot, still didn't like it. Um, And I think it's okay to dislike books. It's okay to have an opinion on what you like to read and what you don't. That being said, I think that you should give books a fair chance. Sometimes I feel like when you start a book, you think it's really terrible and then it gets better. Or again, as we were talking about with Melissa, if you reread a book later in life, if you have the time, um, that can always change your opinion. But I think it's okay to read a book and give it a fair chance and still dislike it. You know, life's too short to read books that you really can't stand. So definitely stick to what you like, I think. I mean, I feel like a lot of times, I mean, the point of books, in my opinion, is to evoke a reaction. Doesn't necessarily have to be a positive reaction but the author wants their readers to feel something. And when your teachers are assigning you fiction books, again, it doesn't mean that they love those fiction books, but they see something in that book that they want you to 
get out of it and maybe apply to the class material. And so, I mean, if you're more of a fan of nonfiction, which I just feel like I, I'm in that mindset now, I don't really get to read fiction that much. But if you like think of it as a challenge and like trying to like suss out what the meaning of that book is or what your professor wants you, the meaning to be for you, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you might still hate the book, but it's just maybe, I don't know, an exercise in your imagination when reading and trying to figure that out. And I don't know if, if you've run into this um, in English, Melissa, or even in journalism, is that I'm not a huge fan of the classics, so I, I don't really like Hemingway, I'm not big into <laughs> kind of all these people right. that, that were supposed to, in air quotes, like really appreciate and everything. Um, so I think what Karina said is really important, that you, you don't have to like these books that you're assigned. You don't have to find fiction as a whole or particular books. You don't have to find them meaningful to you if, if they're not. And that's, that's perfectly fine. And I think that kind of gets lost in college courses, I think, in that we're, right. <laughs> we're always assigned these. Mm-hmm. And we're like, this is the greatest author that's ever lived. And you're like, I can't so understand yeah, what they're so, saying. So, so like, crime like am, I, am I supposed oh, no. to emulate this writing that I can't even read? Um, <laughs> so that's a very good point that, I mean, it's... Either um, what Melissa said, find something that that you think you should get out of it for the class or for yourself um, or something like that and kind of make it work for you as best you can. But yeah. Any favorite subgenres of fiction? So I know there's a lot of different kind of subgenres that you'll see. So not necessarily um, sci-fi or or romance or anything like that, but um, flash fiction, um, particular kinds of short fiction. If you like more kind of realistic fiction or like magical stuff happening in your in your books, I guess I tend to go more towards realism, like compared to like the whole dystopian craze that's going on with fiction. I think it just I got really fed up with that in high school and like all the series that came out. And like that being said, I don't like series, and I think that maybe it might apply to other people who aren't huge fiction readers. Is like, once you start a series, you're like, like you know, damn it, now I have to, like, read all of these books, oh, and it kind of okay. becomes this chore instead of, like, I just want to read a book and have that be it. Like, have it just be its story in itself, and I can move on to the next thing. So, I mean, those are the types of things I avoid, I guess. Um, I don't really go for particular genres. I think a good thing is to go off people's recommendations. That's usually what I do. Mm-hmm. I think that's definitely true with... Um, recommendations um I think with you know a series like the Harry Potter books where they have such a huge following if you read it you're not only you know reading a book series that you might like or dislike but you're also um you're going to be able to participate in a lot of conversations with people our age and even people older or younger just because so many people have read the Harry Potter books but there are some series that I can't (laughs) oh really (laughs) no I mean Harry Potter was good until like the fourth book and then they just like kind of what you were saying like it's such a time commitment like I I I just (laughs) wanted to enjoy a book like kind of this like kind of mystical other like world and stuff like that and then and then it does kind of become a chore like now all these things you have to keep track of yeah so you're like all of these things are happening (laughs) and I don't remember what happened in the first half of the book because it's taken me a year to like read it and so it's it's that commitment I think that's that's kind of interesting and since you brought up Harry Potter (laughs) well I used to have a competition with my sisters when the Harry Potter books would come out we'd make my mom drive us to Costco and then we would have to get two books and we try and finish it before the other one so like I could remember everything in the first half of the book just because we'd read it in like a day which probably wasn't very healthy and we probably (laughs) missed a lot of the important stuff but I think if you find a series you like then that's one thing but I remember I read when I was younger I'm trying to think of what it's called I think it was a series of unfortunate events and that one I couldn't finish because I I couldn't get through it it was it was very sad too many yeah. yeah quite morbid but I was just talking about fantasy in general because I think a big one right now is Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. You have two boats. You know, the people who just watched the show and really like the show and then the people who read the books and are just so adamantly against the show, whether they've seen it or not. And I've been tempted to, like, start that series multiple times. And it's not that George R. R. Martin is 
particularly a bad writer, I just can't do it. It's just too much. <laughs> I just don't like fantasy, and then, like, no matter how hard I try, I can't get into it. And I think, I don't know, I think that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be cool for me to be a part of those conversations, but... Then again, I think we're a lot of times we're shamed for not reading the novel before the movie. And mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what takes a lot of the joy out of reading is when you're forced to do it. So yeah. I think, you know, just going doing what you want to do. And if you end up wanting to read the book, that's cool. It's all cool. It's going to work out. That's definitely how I feel, too, is kind of similar to what I was saying earlier. You know, if you don't want to read a book, just don't read it. Right. Um, I think a lot of people are saying, like, oh, you have to read the Game of Thrones. And I'm in the third group, which wasn't mentioned, which has never seen the show or read a book. But I've never... People are like, oh, you need to read this book. And I'm like, I don't think so. Perhaps not. <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Don't read something if you just don't want to. Right. Well, on a side note, I would say... Keep up to date with new publishing companies. I think new authors are very underrated. Um, I think looking at even the bestseller list is awesome. Um, I feel most college students feel a strong pressure to read, as Iris was saying, the classics, continue reading authors that everyone knows. But there's so much, especially with poetry, there's so many new poets and authors that are changing the world with what they're writing, and sometimes they can get overlooked. Mm -hmm. So those are some authors I think people should be in tune with. Barnes & Noble does have, um, like, up-and-coming, like, author lists. They have, like, debut novel lists. They have um, kind of things like that. They, I don't know that it's organized in a super helpful way. It mm-hmm. might just be by date of publication or something, or if mm-hmm. it's if it's reviewed in some way. Um, but you can try um, Barnes & Noble's website, for that matter. Um, or, like, literary journals, maybe. They might have a book mm-hmm. review section. Um, and they might have some new authors um, that'd be outside of kind of bestseller lists. So you'll probably get you know, smaller authors and, and littler, littler, smaller <laughs> presses. <laughs> Sundance is another local bookstore, but they usually have newer books. So that's cool too, mm-hmm. because they'll feature newer authors and books that have just come out. But also Grassroots is, is interesting because I know that their hiring process, like, they want their employees to know a lot and be really passionate about writing and reading. So they usually are pretty stoked to give you a recommendation. And it's super affordable. And they have coupons. <laughs> so it's awesome. Definitely. And I've also yeah. found that most people that you admire always have good book recommendations. Right. Very true. Does no, anyone I mean, have strong feelings about Joseph Conrad? Oh, uh, well, Heart of Darkness ruined my life. I tried to read it, and I couldn't <laughs> so, get through it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I've tried to read that book twice, and I just, oh my gosh, puts me to it's sleep. It's gnarly. It's so hard. And it's then you're dense. Like, it's, it's like Apocalypse Now. It's cool. Like, I just... It's one of those books you get peer pressured into thinking that you should really like. <laughs> what else has he written? I don't know, That's but I thing. couldn't read that book, and I fell asleep in Apocalypse Now, so I feel like this is just a bad <laughs> recipe in general. So. What's the book that you most remember from high school? To Kill a Mockingbird? I, no, that, I mean, that one was okay. I think I, I mostly remember a short story, Flowers for Algernon. Oh, okay. So sad. And I, like, like, that stuck with me. Like, forever, and I don't know why. <laughs> like, I think it was, like, sixth or seventh grade or something, and we read that, and I was like, my whole life has been changed now. Like, <laughs> I think I've repressed every memory from that because it was so sad. Of Mice and Men was super sad, too, and I really, I don't know. I liked that one. I remember that one. Like, that wasn't even sad. I mean, it's kind like of Like, the sad. end was sort of sad. It's hilarious. Spoilers. <laughs> Lenny dies. <laughs> That that book got me right in my heart. Well, Melissa. he doesn't die. He gets murdered. That there's yeah. there's different language. He gets there. murdered out of love, questionably. It's just so that seems healthy. Very, yeah. <laughs> didn't he? Didn't Lenny kill the the girl on accident? Yeah. Right. Oh, and you I thought that was part of it yeah. because they were gonna like like hang him or something. I thought. Yeah, that yeah. book's just a mess. Sad, they should have just left town. <laughs> <laughs> like, Why didn't they just like up and they leave? Free. They could have <laughs> been free. <laughs> The book's a bummer. Okay. It is. <laughs> it's sad. East of Eden, phenomenal. Yeah, oh my gosh. I feel like I should. It's I should renowned for having the most evil villain mm-hmm. in literature, and I read it and I was shocked. This villain is, is too much for me. Because everybody loves it's the good. villain more than the protagonist. Sure. Definitely. I think I think protagonists <laughs> are boring most of the time. I like the evil characters or the secondary characters. 
that one that one's a huge recommendation for me I would say for sure just because um it is it's extremely long I think it's like 600 pages or something also the movie adaptations don't bother James Dean is great (laughs) to look at but other than that not, not a good movie but so yeah but that book's amazing it's 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 kind of like a giant poem so did you have to read brave new world no did you i didn't either really because i mean it's one of those books that's so weird and like i just think it's so cool it's the language in it isn't super casual so you kind of have it takes some time to like sit down and read it but it's just such an interesting idea and like i said i'm not a fan of dystopian fiction at all like it kind of bothers me and this is probably something that I would consider dystopian. And it's just, it's rad. It's so interesting. And the author himself, if you look into Aldous Huxley, he was really into psychedelics. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he actually died, like, tripping wow. by his own will. And what so, a like, guy. you, like, look into <laughs> him, and it's just such an interesting, like, just look up the plot of Brave New World. I think everybody should look at it. <laughs> I'll look into it for sure. And on that interesting note, (laughs) we'll bring our podcast to a close. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for joining us. Uh, Thank you to Karina and Melissa for coming to our discussion on fiction today. Thank you for listening, and we hope you'll tune in next time.